So, on to something better. Oh, no wait, there's more movie. Sorry. So everyone hears their screams and wakes up. Okay, they didn't. That's weird. They all must be really heavy sleepers. Especially considering the scream was loud enough to wake the dead. Gail Richards, you just died. What are you gonna do next? I'm gonna jump in bed with an old man. Yep, that's right. Gail's first instinct was to visit Cosmo Topper, which is what now makes him our main character. Oh, this is terrible. No kidding. Yeah, you want to go back to the Caddington house. Cosmo! Yeah, hey, quick, do something, vanish. Well, all right, Toppy. Here I go. And you may be wondering why he told the ghost to disappear. He's the only one who can see her. Well, you see, he's not the only one who can see ghosts. Everyone can. Yay! But for some dumb reason, Gail only shows herself to Topper. Which is stupid, because the movie would resolve itself a lot faster if she would just show herself to other people. Instead of just a short old banker. Jeez, this movie is really, really stupid. Shut up! Shut up! Okay, okay! Sorry. So, on with the movie. Oh, oh it's you, dear. <laughs> Cosmo, who on earth were you talking to? Uh, my six-foot-tall invisible rabbit friend. So his wife goes back to her bedroom. Wait, what? Um... They each sleep in separate rooms? Not beds, but rooms? It's one thing when Lucy and Ricky had separate beds, or when Nick and Nora had separate beds. But separate rooms? It's just absurd. What's next? Separate houses? Good night, dear. Good night, honey bunny. It's just weird. Huh. Oh, never mind. I see why. So Topper calls his chauffeur, and... Um... Since the chauffeur sleeps in his own room in the house, does that mean that he and Mr. and Mrs. Topper in some sort of weird 1940s three-way? And what the hell is the chauffeur wearing? Is he some sort of old-style pimp? Wow, this movie covers black stereotypes before they were stereotypes. This movie is groundbreaking in its offensiveness. So off they go to Carrington Hall, and instead of explaining the presence of a ghost to the chauffeur, they decide to fuck with him. Why? I guess because Mr. Topper is an asshole. And once at Carrington Hall, Topper and Gail decide to reenact the Footprints in the Sand poem. Uh -oh, that ain't rabbit, sir. And realizing Gail's not a six foot tall rabbit, the chauffeur decides to get the hell out of Dodge, leaving Topper and Gail alone to investigate her murder. Where were you? Well, let me see. Oh yes, I was sleeping in that bed. A and then it seems I got up to close a window. There's the window. Wow! There it is! Holy shit, that thing came up at us out of nowhere. And then they come across her dead body. You've been stabbed. Stabbed? This is no time for champagne. And gee, I didn't want to say this before, but she drinks more than Nick Charles. So Cosmo Topper goes to call the police, only to find the phone's as dead as the girl. Operator. One ringy dingy. Operator. And so, by keeping quiet on the phone, Topper apparently wakes up the whole house. But they weren't awoken by Gail's screams earlier. Hey! I thought I told you to shut your mouth! Sorry, sorry. They are then joined by Anne's father, and they all go upstairs to investigate the body. Only to find it's conveniently gone, which means they don't believe Topper's story. And does Gail show herself to confirm there's been a murder? Ha ha ha. No, that'd be too convenient. Shut up or I'll cut ya! Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't need the knife. Uh, just as I thought. What do you mean, just as you thought? Schizophrenia. Um, did he mean schizophrenia? And how did he diagnose that so fast? Anyway, the taxi driver shows up looking for his money, which is when the black spy from Spy vs. Spy here decides to attack Anne. And Anne, incapable of running, like all women in black and white movies, does the only thing she can do. Faint. Why can't women run away in old black and white movies? Had it not been invented yet? Was it too risque for films at the time? I swear to God I'll cut you. Well, uh, sorry, sorry, I was just asking a question. Hey, at least the murderer gets the concept. Miss Carrington! Miss Carrington! Oh. What's going on here? Who's that guy in the black coat? What happened to her? Who are you? What's the point of this movie? What time is it? How much longer is this movie? What's next? And again, everyone comes into the room and crowds it up. 
Say, what are you doing here? Um, he shouldn't be pointing that gun around. Well, you gotta have an opinion and stop it. Oh, what the fuck's happening? All right, so I'll explain it to you. This young lady owes me for a taxi cab ride. I came here to collect it. She asked me up to this room. I heard her scream and walked into the middle of an Orson Welles broadcast. Um, you walk into an attempted murder, not an alien invasion. So the butler is sent to call the police, but is sidetracked by the appearance of Mrs. Topper, and so she ends up making the call to the police on the phone that didn't work earlier, which is, um... Shut up! Okay, okay, I'm sorry. So the police are informed of the murder, and the chauffeur is sent on his own little adventure into insanity. <laughs> The seal knocked him down. That's sort of funny. Not as funny. Oh, fuck off, movie! And this brings me to something I wanted to talk about. This movie does one thing I find that a lot of old black and white movies do. They have one character go on a crazy, funny adventure, while the rest of the characters continue on with the main story. Why do they do that? And imagine if movies did that today. Look, listen. I know why you choose to have your little <clears throat> group therapy sessions in broad daylight. I know why you're afraid to go out at night. The Batman. <laughs>